What is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to another mock draft reaction video and today we are reacting to Kevin O'Connor's mock draft of the ringer. So if you guys are enjoying these mock draft reactions, drop a like on this video and like always I will leave a link to the article in the description below. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So uh, he has a trade as I noticed. Yeah, he has the Charlotte Hornets sending number three their unprotected 2022 to move up to number one is select James Wiseman, which is kind of interesting because James Wiseman could be there at three. There's a chance Lamelo and Anthony Edwards go one or two, or maybe the Warriors shock some people and they take um, Obi Toppin or Tyrese Halliburton or, or Denny of Dia at two. And let's say Anthony Edwards goes one. I don't know if I really like this trade for Charlotte to go up to get Wiseman. I'd rather just stay at three and keep your first next year. Uh, so I kind of disagree with that trade. Next up, he has Anthony Edwards going two to the Golden State Warriors. So Anthony Edwards going to the Warriors, I think would make sense if Wiseman is off the board. I, I think Wiseman is probably the perfect fit for that team to get their center to go up against teams like the Lakers and the Nuggets in the Western Conference. Somebody that can guard those big men of Nikola Jokic and Anthony Davis, or at least just try to guard him. Obviously, they're not going to be able to contain him, but just at least try to. Or I even realized that he has kind of shades of, so he has a mild-mannered Richard Wallace, Sheed, and a high-energy Hassan Whiteside for Wiseman. And for Anthony Edwards, he has Victor Oladipo, Eric Gordon, and then Dion Waiters. All right, so that's his first two picks. And then he has Denny of Dia going three to Minnesota, so they're trading down to take Denny at three. So he's a versatile forward with the playmaking ability of a guard. Well, I, I kind of know what Denny is. Um, shades of Daniel Gallinari, Nicholas Batum, and Dario Sarge, all foreign players, as you can see. But I just don't know if I really agree with trading down from one to take Denny at three. I would even maybe try to see if you could trade down to four. Mm, well, maybe if you trade down even more, he might go to Chicago at four. So if you really want Denny, then you got to take him at three. I just don't know if I would take Denny there. I mean, I don't think I would take one level ball there. I don't think that's a good fit at all. But I don't know. Where do you put Denny? You put, well, I guess you could put Denny as your small forward. And then you would have, or I guess he could be your stretch forward. But defense, I don't know. I mean, I think he's an all right defender. And I think he'll be okay in the NBA um, as a defender. But mm, I don't know. That's like the first time I've heard that. Okay. Uh, Minnesota could trade down to select Denny of Dia. All right, let's see what the next picks are. So he's got LaMelo Ball going forward to Chicago, shades of Jason Williams, Lonzo Paul, and Sean Livingston. Yeah, I think that makes sense if these are the first three picks. I think Chicago kind of lucks out, and they take LaMelo Ball at four, 100%. Even though you did take Kobe White last year, I think you got to take LaMelo. I mean... Maybe if you're really thinking about it, you take still you still take Isaac Okoro here, and then you have your young core of White, Levine, Okoro, Market, and Carter Jr. But maybe you still just go best player available, and that is Lamelo Ball. But it sucks to be Kobe White then, who played great at the end of last year's season. But hey, Lamelo Ball is probably going to be better than Kobe White, um, just initially. Maybe not, but we'll see. Number five, he's got Obi Toppin going to the Cavs. That's who I have him in my mock two going to the Cavs. So shades of Amari Stoudemire, Kyle Kuzma, and bounce a bouncy Marcus Morris. I don't really like the Kuzma comparison. I can get the Amari Stoudemire comparison and a bouncy Marcus Morris. I don't really get with the Kyle Kuzma. But at five, this is Cleveland basically taking Kevin Love's replacement down the line. So if they can end up trading Kevin Love and kind of give Obi Toppin the keys as the starting four, I think that would be a, a solid pick there at five. And some people think he could go in the top three now. Next up, we have Isaac Okoro going to the Spurs. All right, we got to go deep dive here so I can see what the trade was. Or what it is. So they're trading DeMar DeRozan and 11 to the Hawks for six. Yeah, I don't think the Hawks would accept that. What? Why would they want DeMar DeRozan? What? What? Kevin? What? I, I feel like that's really dumb. I feel like Kevin O'Connor is like a really smart guy. And I feel like that's a really dumb offer for the Hawks. Why would they move down when they just drafted two other wings last year? And DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish in the lottery. They're still developing their young core. Why would they trade for a guy... Move down five spots to take a pretty much a one-year rental in DeMar DeRozan, who's going to take shots away from the young guys. I, I don't agree with that trade and not really provide you any defense. Yeah, I don't agree with that trade at all. I think that's pretty horrible for Atlanta. But yeah, I do like that for San Antonio to get Isaac Okoro. I mean, I think if you're at six, you just take Isaac Okoro if you're Atlanta. So I disagree with that, Kevin. We'll move on. Uh, Pistons taking Halbert in at seven. I think that would be the obvious pick there. Oh, and also he has Gerald Wallace and Justice Winslow as comps to Isaac Coro. And for Halbert, and he has SGA and Sam Cassell. I kind of like the SGA um, comparison. I also kind of think like Alonzo Ball one as well. Uh, like a good defensive playmaker at the one or as your leading ball handler. So I, I think Detroit should take Tyrese Halbert if he's on the board even over uh, Killian Hayes. 
Uh, killing A's to the Knicks at eight. I mean, I'm okay with that. Uh, I would be cool with one of these two point guards going to the Knicks at eight. Um, so a dynamic left-handed shot maker, uh, shades of D'Lo and Manu Ginobili. I kind of like, well, I'm not saying he is Manu Ginobili, but the way he dribbles and the way he kind of attacks the rim is kind of, he looks like what Manu did when Manu was a lot younger. Um, he is a good shooter and I think he does have defensive potential and I, I think he's a top five player in this draft. Uh, well, if he falls to the Knicks at eight, then they better take him. If they don't, then I would be very upset. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm okay with this so far besides the two trades. It's hard to predict trades in mock drafts, I know. And I can, I don't even think this trade is all that bad for, like, that one's okay. Like, I can get the reasoning for Charlotte and Minnesota. But I think this trade for San Antonio is great, but for Atlanta, I think is is kind of silly. Uh, so he's got a Neko Kumbu going 9 to DC. I think if they landed at their center here, that would be great because they kind of need someone that can be better than Thomas Bryant down the line. And this won't take minutes, or they won't take a backcourt guy because they already have Beal and Wall. Kind of at the wings, they have Hashimura, or at the three at least, and Troy Brown Jr. And then at the four, they have Davis Bertans or Hashimura. So I, I think they could use a center in uh, Neka Kungwu, who he's comparing to Bam, a young Antonio McDyess or Taj Gibson. I've seen the Bam comparisons. He's got Devin Vassell going to the Suns at 10. Hmm. I mean, I would like them to draft a point guard, but yeah, I guess it's either Devin Vassell or... Devin Vassell or uh, Cole Anthony. But then maybe you think about Patrick Williams if you think you could play him next to DeAndre Aiden. I think that could be something I would also maybe like if Patrick Williams is still on the board for Minnesota to try to trade up um, from 17 to like 12 or 11 here to get Patrick Williams. I think that would be pretty interesting. But yeah, he's got Devin Vassell uh, going to the Suns at 10. Shades of Chris Middleton, Rocco, and Matisse Thibel. Next up, we have Patrick Williams who goes 11, who I think provides the Hawks some really good defense, but... I don't really think, like, if they were getting the Spurs first round pick next year or something like that, I guess he's kind of comparing this trade to what the Suns did last year with they uh, traded away number six and they got Dario Sarge and 11 with Minnesota. And I guess he's comparing Dario Sarge to DeMar DeRozan here. So I don't know if I totally agree with that. I mean, I like Patrick Williams' fit at 11, but I would just rather get a different asset than DeMar DeRozan in return. Shades of Gallo and PJ Tucker. Gallo as a scorer? Okay, because I know Patrick Williams is a really good defender, so um, yeah, if he's a shot clock or a shot creator, I mean, he could replace Sean Collins on the line. I see. I would really like Patrick Williams next to Carl Anthony Towns, Kyra Lewis. Oh, maybe I would take him. Yeah, also if I was the Suns, I forgot about Kyra Lewis. Duh. Going to the Kings. I mean, I don't know if I like Kyra Lewis next to De'Aaron Fox. I feel like they're very similar players, and you're not getting great shooting out of either one of them. Uh, I mean, yeah. So I don't really. I mean, I know he's a good shot creator, but I don't know if I really trust his shot. Maybe right away, but I think I'd prefer maybe an Aaron Nesmith here or a RJ Hampton. I don't know. Like, I think I was going to be a better player than RJ Hampton. I just don't know, know with that fit. I would maybe think about Aaron Nesmith or Precious Achua or Sadiq Bey at 12. Uh, he's got Jalen Smith going to the uh, Pelicans here at 13. All right. I could get behind that. I, I think I would prefer a Cole Anthony or a Aaron Nesmith here, but I kind of like Jalen Smith. I think this could be also a trade-up candidate for Minnesota. I think Minnesota should really try to trade up from 17 to get Patrick Williams or Jalen Smith. Uh, he's got shades of Serge, Kelly Olenek, and Brian, and Cairo had shades of Darius Carr, and Lou Will, and Ish Smith. He's got RJ Hampton going to the Celtics at 14. Mm, I don't know. With Preston's Ochoa there, I'd probably prefer Ochoa, but I guess they could use a backup point guard, but I honestly prefer Cole Anthony over RJ Hampton. That's my opinion. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really the biggest RJ Hampton fan over Kyra Lewis and Cole Anthony, so if I was in Celtics at 14 and you're looking for your backup point guard, yeah, I'm taking Cole Anthony. Next, or... Even this man right here, Tyrell Terry, who's going to the Magic at 15. I prefer him over RJ Hampton as well. I wouldn't draft him at 10 if I were the Suns, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to think about it. Um, he's a good shooter. He's a good scorer. And um, he, he's a, he's got a high motivation, a high motive for the game as well. And I think this would be a good pick for Orlando. It gives them some offensive help. Sadiq Bey going to the Blazers at 16. So they would have really two perfect options um, according to this mock draft. Sadiq Bey or Aaron Nesmith. I don't think they can go wrong. And I think they'd be so happy to see both those players available at 16 for them. Uh, next up, we have Preston's Acho. We're going to the Celtics at 17. So he is, um, is this a trade? Is this a trade? Yeah, this is a trade. So he's got Minnesota trading out of this pick. Let's see what the trade is. Um, it, it is going to be, uh, it is 26 and 30 for 17. I really don't like that for Minnesota in this weaker draft. Uh, so he's got just an energetic big. Yeah, I, I, like obviously Preston Chew is kind of like a Swiss Army knife on defense. Uh, he could probably guard threes, fours, and fives. 
And I think he'd be a good pick for the Celtics. I just don't know if Minnesota would accept that trade. Aaron Nesmith going to the Mavericks at 18. They get, gives him shooting. That's what you need around Luka Doncic. I actually really like that pick. I would definitely take Aaron Nesmith over Puka Zewski, um, if that is the availability at 18 for them. Uh, I like that pick. Josh Green go to the Nets at 19. Yeah, I guess I could deal with that. You're probably looking for a wing in general. Presses Ochoa, like any of those fours are off the board. Uh, Cole Anthony's still falling. Uh, I really think Cole Anthony could go in the lottery, and I think he's going to be a top 14 player in this draft. So I, I really don't get why a lot of these mock drafts are really not high on him. Not high on him on whatsoever. Maybe that like he, he obviously talks to maybe some executives or stuff like that as scouts, and I obviously don't. So they definitely know something I don't. We have Desmond Bain at 20, a good shooter out of TCU. Okay, I, I actually really like that. He's a senior, so I feel like he's a right away ready guy for that great play development staff. And he's going to be in that special rotation. I do like that pick, even though, yeah, he's going to have Cole Anthony going to the 76ers here at 21, which I like that pick as well. I think if they end up with um, Tyro Terry or Cole Anthony or Kyra Lewis, I think that is a successful draft for the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, Tyrese Maxey going to the Nuggets at 22. I know some people have him in their top 10. I have him outside the lottery, but kind of in the 15 to 20, 21, 22 range. Um, and I think this would be a really good pick for Denver if he falls that far in the draft. Moving on to 23, we have Jaden McDaniels going to the Utah Jazz. Hmm. I don't know. I think I would like a point guard, like a scoring point guard, or just a score off the bench with um, Emmanuel Moody possibly leaving, like maybe a Cassius Winston. I don't know if Jaden McDaniels is really a need for them. Obviously, they need kind of offense where they can get it off the bench. I don't know. I'm trying to think, like, who else I like, would have. Like, obviously, if um, Tyro Terry fell to them, but I don't think he does. No way. But uh, Desmond Bain, Jaden McDaniels. Yeah, you know what? I can get behind Jaden McDaniels. Malachi Flynn going to the Bucks at 24. So, he has Flynn going over Theo Maladon. Interesting. Over Trey Jones. Over Cassius Winston. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I think Malachi Flynn's a good player. Uh, maybe just a little high. Maybe just a little high. Pukazewski going to the Thunder at 25. I honestly wouldn't mind that for the Jazz there at 23. Uh, yeah, why not? He's a young guy. He's, yeah, 18 and a half. He's going to be... He won't even mean... Oh, my God. Because it's crazy. Because when the draft usually happens, we have, what, the draft in June and season starts in October. So we have at least four or five months. The draft... Or the season's literally starting a month after the draft. So, yeah, he's going to be like... He's going to be 18 years old on a rebuilding Thunder team. I can get with that, 100%. Uh, we, or we Andrew Balmero. Actually, that's who I would like to Utah. That's who I was thinking of. Uh, going to Minnesota at 26. I mean, if you're trading down at a 17 and you're still ending up with Leandro Balmero, and then you, I guess, technically have Danny Avila. Wow, you're really liking the foreign players if you're Kurosan Rosas in this mock draft. Okay. Um, Isaiah Stewart going to the Knicks at 27. I do not like that pick at all. I mean, I would love Balmero there if he's there at 27, but... I'm not a fan of Isaiah Stewart going to the Knicks. They already have their center in Mitchell Robinson. They can find a backup center. They, I don't think they need to take a big here. I would even think about taking Jamis Ramsey, Robert Woodyard. I'm just trying to think of like other guys I would probably take. I mean, I would hope, that, like me as a Knicks fan, I'm hoping Desmond Bain or Leandro Balmaro is there at 27. Or even Pukusevsky, somebody like that I would really take. But uh yeah, I don't know if I really like Isaiah Stewart going to the Knicks. Like, I like him going the first round, but not to the Knicks. Like, the Lakers, Jamez Ramsey, I think this is a... Uh, I've seen a lot of these mock drafts have the Lakers taking Jamez Ramsey. They must like him a lot, I guess, in the pre-draft workouts, if there even is any by now. And this NBA season is so weird in this offseason. Uh, he's got Zeke Naji going to the Raptors at 29. Uh, I feel like they would take a higher upside guy. Just my opinion. And then Robert Woodyard going to the Timberwolves at 30. So they end up with Denny of Deha, Leandro Balmaro, and Robert Woodyard. Not a bad draft. Not a bad draft whatsoever. Woodyard definitely has a defensive potential. That's why I would kind of like him going to the Knicks to be maybe like a stretch four playing next to Mitchell Robinson. And then you have a really good defensive front court. Yeah, I would definitely prefer him going to the Knicks over Isaiah Stewart. So yeah, that is going to be for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction to this mock draft. I do appreciate the trade ideas though. I think that is pretty fun because you know we'll see trades on draft night. So it is really hard to predict what trades happen. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you guys next video.